Welcome back, gang, to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where we explore the latest innovations and trends in the world of technology and business. I'm your host, Neil C. Hughes, and today I've got the Chief Revenue Officer at DealTail, which is a Vionai company joining me on the podcast. His name is Ariel, and he's a seasoned entrepreneur and marketing expert with a wealth of experience in the realm of artificial intelligence and analytics. So today we're going to be discussing his journey as an entrepreneur and revenue leader, but also the impact of conversational AI and what that's having on the world of marketing analytics, and also AI-driven metrics for marketers, tracking ROI, and the role of causal inference in marketing too. So buckle up and hold on tight because it's time for me to beam your ears all the way to Tel Aviv in Israel, where Ariel is waiting to share his story. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell everyone listening a little about who you are and what you do? Sure. My name is Ariel Greifman and I'm the Chief Revenue Officer of the Intel, which is um, an AI-based customer uh, analytics attribution platform. And I'm looking forward to talking about everything uh, deal tale today and learning more about what kind of problems you're solving, the technology, all that stuff. But before we begin, I always like to take my guests back in time. So can you share your journey as an entrepreneur and revenue leader, including the challenges and successes that you've experienced along the way, and ultimately how they've shaped your approach to business? Or should I say, what is your origin story? (laughs) (laughs) Sounds good. Um, So, um, you know, I think I've always been an entrepreneur um, all the way, like, um, when I think about myself as a you know, as a what as a young child, or uh, when I was growing up, I, w- I was always the one, you know, having the lemonade stand, and you know, doing the um, uh, basically every kind of starting every business imaginable. And as I grew up, I um, I took it to kind of a more productive and let's put it this way, scalable place where um, you know, fell in love with the technology and uh, wanted to start uh, something that's going to be um impacting people's lives through uh, technology um so um you know when i started out my um my first business kind of um starting as an entrepreneur was actually a marketing agency that uh, i grew into kind of an offshoring uh, business where i used to take uh, sales development jobs and um i'll offshore them to the philippines and then uh, right after that i decided to do something that would be a little bit more challenging and would be more scalable and then i started detail where our aim was to um basically put the individual marketer as the person in charge of analytics uh, which was uh, something challenges because up until then and um, you know analytics was something that was done by professional analysts or you know marketers were only able to do kind of very basic analytics And we were one of the first companies that actually enabled the individual marketers to do kind of very complex, uh, different types of complex analysis. And fast forward to 2023, and here we are, and AI seems to be changing just about every industry. And it's a topic that we keep hearing about day after day after day. And I'd love to bring you on here today to set the scene and talk about the role that conversational AI will play in marketing analytics specifically and also how is it how its adoption has changed the way marketers might approach data analysis and and ultimately decision making as well there's a lot of businesses going after data driven decision making it feels like there's so much going on there's a lot of big changes but can you expand on that and the role that conversational ai will play in marketing analytics of course um so i think we're living in stoic times because I think AI has been a promise for a very long time. And suddenly, um, at least um, from the beginning of this year, we're really starting to see AI, you know, moving forward and, um, you know, at, at exponential pace. And I am, um, what I'm talking about and probably uh, what everybody is talking about is ChatGPT. And so we all know ChatGPT from, you know, maybe writing an email for you. Um, or um, I don't know, writing a blog post, but ChatGPT has 
a lot of other uses as well. One of them is in analytics. So what ChatGPT can actually do, or it's not really ChatGPT, but what's called large language models is actually allow you to um, you know, analyze huge quantities of data using simple um, or plain English. So you can ask questions and then uh, the model would actually understand or the lang large language model would understand the questions and translate them into a uh, structured query language uh, and basically anal start analyzing these questions for you and provide you with answers. And I think this is um, a major breakthrough and something that, to um, be honest, a few months ago, I didn't think that um, we'd be coming, especially this, uh, this fast and at this quality and scale. And I think the um, advancement that we're seeing is, um, you know, so incredible that I think pretty soon will be, um, these technology are going to be so common that we wouldn't know how we actually managed without them. I think what I would compare this to is, um, you know, when Steve Jobs released the first iPhone and, you know, Within a few years, basically, we all have had access to all of the world's uh, knowledge within our palm, the palm of our hand or our fingertips. I think we're going to see a revolution at this scale. I completely agree with you. And if we look, what, just six, seven months ago, the world was such a different place. And generative AI is just changing everything at the moment. And to bring to life what we're talking about here and, and learn more about how AI-driven metrics can actually help marketers make those better informed, data-driven decisions. Are there any examples of, of metrics that are particularly useful in, in driving marketing success? Of course. Um, so there are several types of metrics that marketers look at, anywhere from, so there are the kind of top of the funnel metrics, things like impressions or website visit tours. Uh, these metrics are, you know, uh, important to follow, but usually they don't actually teach you what is the actual performance. Usually what marketers that are more sophisticated and want to actually see the contribution to the actual revenue of the business look at is uh, something called attribution models. So they actually look at the revenue generated and they're through all sorts of analytical statistical models that actually analyze what was the contribution of different campaigns towards this revenue? Um, so today we're actually seeing a significant move on the top of the final metrics towards these types of more analytical models that are enabling people to do um, more of optimization type analysis in order to improve performance rather than uh, what happened in the past that it was more about you know, tracking different metrics and seeing how they play out. And tracking return on investment is also crucial for any marketing campaign out there. So can you possibly share some of the best practices for accurately measuring ROI and also the role of AI in, in possibly streamlining that process too? Of course. So um, tracking ROI is um, extremely difficult with marketing because of the few challenges along the way. I guess that the first challenge is that um, the customer journey is complex and we're only able to track some of it, meaning that, um, you know, unless you are completely transactional uh, type of sale, um, usually the customer would be engaging with a lot of different campaigns on different platforms. So they can click on an ad and go to your website. They can, uh, the customer can uh, engage with you on social. The customer can, um, for example, uh, talk to a sales representative or um, download some of your sales material on your website. So depending on what kind of a business you are, the customer actually engages with a lot of different um, elements or programs of your marketing. And many times you don't actually have the ability to Break all of them. Now, in order to solve that, uh, there are several types of uh, models, or some of them use AI uh, in order to actually give you um, 
The answer to what is your ROI. So the first one, and the, I guess the most common one, uh, especially with businesses with a more complex sales cycle, is called multi-touch attribution. So it actually gathers all of the customer touch points from various platforms, uh, at least the ones that you have access to at the customer level, and then using different models, calculate what is the ROI. One of the more important models that uh, people use is called Markov chains. And what this model is known for is the ability to actually calculate the incremental value of each one of these touch points. So for example, if somebody clicks on an ad and then, for example, downloads a brochure and only then converts, a Markov chain would, en- would allow you to understand what is more important, whether it's the actual ad or the brochure, what was more convincing through um, a slightly complex, uh, with a slightly complex point of network. Um, the other technique is called media mix modeling. Media mix modeling allows you to actually look at what you're spending on different platforms or um, things like uh, how many patients you have on different platforms or other kind of top of the bundle metrics, and then use a quantitative model in order to understand how that affects outcomes. Usually it's a kind of a regression type model that allows you to see how changes in what you spend or how um, you invest in different advertising and marketing channels actually impact the uh, um, bottom of the funnel conversions or sales. And then it allows you to estimate what is the ideal or optimal spend on each one of these channels in order to maximize ROI. This is more appropriate for, for example, companies that are uh, that would like to uh, measure ROI, but for example, don't have customer level data. For example, companies that say in brick and mortar stores and so on. Again, they have a solution by actually looking at the overall uh, spend on different channels, and then at the bottom line, sales. Uh, and one of the things I always try and do on this podcast is demystify complex technology and some of the terminology in trends that many in the industry might be hearing. So from that side of things, can you explain the concept of casual inference and also its significance in marketing analytics and how it, it can actually help marketers optimize their campaigns for better outcomes? Of course, so causal inference is um, a machine learning technique that allows you to not only get the uh, kind of link between in, uh, different variables, and, uh, but actually understand cause and effect. Mm. And this is very important uh, because let me give you a quick uh, example. Uh, let's say that you're giving away a coupon with 20% discount. There's always the question whether the coupon actually makes people buy your product or people who already intended uh, buying your product actually use the coupon and go 20% discount. Makes sense? So yeah. Yeah, the question is whether the coupon is actually <laughs> the cause or the coupon is actually the, um, the effect. Um, so in this example, and um, this statistical technique would actually look at uh, like-minded groups or uh, kind of compare groups and be a- allow you to actually um, understand whether you should be using this, this coupon because it actually makes people who did not intend to buy initially then buy your product or whether you're actually, you know, spending money and providing this coupon for people who would buy your product anyways. And I'm curious, if we put the tech to one side for a moment, uh, how is your experience as an MBA graduate from the Darden School of Business Adam- Administration at the University of Virginia, how did that influence your entrepreneurial journey and an approach to revenue science? Because I feel there's a, a piece missing there. Sure. So um, I think an MBA is a wonderful experience because it gives you the depth and the breadth of um, you know experiences and you know, topics that you learn to uh, tackle a lot of different real-life problems or challenges. Um, anywhere from as an entrepreneur um, and also 
and you know, as a um, as as a manager within a company, uh, sometimes you encounter a lot of different aspects of uh, management, like even managing people or finances, building a budget, um, and understanding, um, you know, how how to build product strategy. And an MBA actually gives you a tool set that you can use in order to solve these problems very analytically. And I think this is the strength in, you know, taking um, an MBA. Now, um, as a data scientist or as a, as, um, a CEO in a company that actually uses data science, um, it actually allows me to uh, develop a more analytical approach. So the understanding that a lot of real life questions actually have a quantitative approach in order to solve them. And I think this is, um, this is very important that this is one of the things that, um, you know, was, um, kind of the core of, um, of detail is the ability to answer and optimize real life questions with uh, the data that is available within the organization. And you mentioned people there, the importance of people there. And in your role as Chief Revenue Office, Officer mm-hmm. at DOTEL, which is a, a VRNI company, you have to balance the responsibilities of leading sales, marketing, and customer success teams. So I'm curious, again, if we put the, the tech to one side for a minute, what kind of strategies do you employ, employ to ensure that all these teams work effectively together? Because it, it's not just about the tech, it's about the people too, isn't it? So revenue teams, and um, in general, is all about people. So the people who drive marketing, people with that um, help our customers and uh, in customer success, all the uh, the individuals that um, you know sell the product and engage uh, with potential customers in order to um, give them or help them understand the value proposition. So and um, it's. Um, Definitely the ability to kind of met, balance all of these aspects of the business. But I think what is really important is to have a good team around you. So, um, so for example, um, making sure that each one of these teams uh, is measured by, or is managed by a really qualified individual that can, um, that can, you know, build kind of the best practices uh, can um, uh, provide kind of the procedures and manage the campaigns. I think that um, I'm very fortunate that I was able to be in the team of very, very qualified uh, managers under me uh, that are really able to, um, you know, take the challenge of, you know, building a revenue team within relatively a new company and scaling it in a way that will then, you know, have perfect execution. And as we look to the future, and AI will inevitably, I think, continue to evolve and shape the marketing landscape, are there any trends that you foresee in the coming years? And and also, how can marketers leverage some of those advancements to drive better outcomes with with revenue science? I appreciate I'm asking you to look in a virtual crystal ball here, but is there anything that you can see on the horizon? Of course. So we're all, you know, we've all experienced the kind of the latest innovations, in the space, I think that around uh, revenue science and uh, there are specific innovations that are going to become very, very important. So the first one is uh, augmenting human talent with AI. So um, today um, we're seeing a huge opportunity that um, individuals can use AI in a very simple way, or maybe kind of the most basic human way with natural language in order to drive outcomes. And so you can do it there uh, with ChatGPT uh, on, for example, okay, in order to write uh, emails or blog posts or um, really create um, or ask for advice and, and get, um, and get um, you know, some results in return. But you can also do it in the world of revenue science and analytics. So you can, for example, uh, today, analyze your data. You can ask performance-related questions, and then the AI would actually analyze your data, use different statistical and mathematical techniques in order to provide you with statistically significant answers. And uh, I think that um, 
the AI itself would augment human abilities in a way that we haven't seen before. So one individual would be able to do the work of you know, many, many individuals today, um, and also um, would be able to um, you know, drive significant performance uh, through analytics in a way that would have taken a very long time, kind of a very and um, significant organizational maturity uh, to be at the level uh, currently. Well, we start at the podcast today talking about your origin story. And as we come full circle, I'm going to ask you to look back and join up the dots and remember the people that might have helped get you where you are today, because I think <laughs> none of us are able to achieve any degree of success without a little help along the way. So if I was to ask you, is there a particular person you're grateful towards? Maybe they saw something in you. Maybe they just invested a bit of time in you. Uh, who would that be and why? Is it is there a story you can share around that? Of course, yes, um, definitely. So I think that, um, you know, one of our, my past investors, when we started detail before we were acquired by Vianai, and uh, his name is um, Nathan Shohami, and uh, he definitely saw the potential, I think, in me and the company and decided to invest in us. And, and not only that, he also, um, I was a first-time CEO of a product-based company, a technology company. So he gave me the kind of know-how and coaching about how to do that, how to think about my new role, and how to be successful in it. So I'm very, very grateful about that. What a beautiful story, a beautiful moment to end on. But before I let you go, for anyone listening, just wanting to find out more information about Deal Tail, maybe reach out to you or your team, where would you like to point everyone listening to? Sure. So you can always find more information about um, our web on our website. So it's uh, theintel.com. Or uh, you can always reach out to me personally on uh, LinkedIn. I um, I try to respond to everybody who reaches out. Awesome. Well, I'll add that link to the show notes so people can find you nice and easily. We covered so much there from conversational AI for marketing analytics, AI-driven metrics for marketers, how to track ROI, demystifying uh, casual inference. And ultimately, I think what brought everything to life and brought it all together was your inspiring origin story and, and how you got here. So just a big thank you for taking the time to sit down and share that with me today. Thank you, Nick. Well, I, for one, learned so much today just listening to Ariel describe his entrepreneurial journey, the role of conversational AI in marketing analytics, and also the potential of AI-driven metrics to revolutionize the marketing landscape as he said in the interview there seven months ago he thought none of this would be possible but here we are seven months later it's all anyone's talking about and i think it's always inspiring to hear from leaders who have navigated the challenges and successes of entrepreneurship while also continuously pushing the boundaries of technology so if you'd like to learn more please check out deal tail uh, their website and their innovative solutions where you can find out more about their innovative solutions. And hopefully you enjoyed today's episode as much as I did. And I, as always, I will cordially invite you to sit down and join me again tomorrow. And equally, I also invite you to carry on this conversation we had today. If some of the things resonated with you, if it sparked new ideas or different points of view to what we expressed today, I'd love to hear from them. So please, I'd love to hear them. So please email me, techblogwriteroutlook.com, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, at Neil C. Hughes. I'll happily keep this conversation going with you on a one-to-one -one basis. And if you've really enjoyed yourself, remember to subscribe so you don't miss any other episodes. If you're feeling extra generous, I'd really appreciate a rating and review, but I'm not going to push that one. So keep exploring the world of technology and business and stay curious, my friends. Thanks for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger.